Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, April 2nd, 2023. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have a co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. That's me. And also, welcome Dread Pirate Higgs from Western Canada. Welcome. Arr. Arr. Nice. Mm-hmm. Digital Free Thought Radio, our talk radio show about atheism. We also talk about free thought, rational thought, humanism, Satanism, Pastafarianism, and the sciences. Conversely, we'll also talk about religions, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in your town where you're just not, especially here in Knoxville, here in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, and we'll tell you more about it after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Well, Matt, what's our topic today? I started a religion. Oh, you did? Yeah, it's going to be a fun one. Um, Another religion I can be an apostate for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's true, it's true. You guys are all currently apostates, but what's an apostate aside from a potential follower? (laughs) (laughs) Just a little bit of extra work. Before mm-hmm. we get into it, we'll consider that the, the meat and potatoes of today's episode. Let's start with some noodles with our own Dread Pirate Hick. <laughs> Would you mind leading us in our weekly invocation, please? You betcha. Mm. Amidst the chaos of this world we roam, one deity stands tall above the rest. The flying spaghetti monster calls us home to a saucy and noodly paradise blessed. With meatballs tender and sauce divine, he nourishes our souls and warms our hearts. His newly appendages forever entwined, guiding us through life's uncharted parts. O Pastor Lord, we kneel before thee and raise our forks in praise and prayer. May thy meatball blessings set us free, and thy noodles of mercy always be near. For thou art the saucy deity above, whose love and grace know no end. May we forever bask in thy noodly love, until our mortal coils we doth dress in. So let us sing of the flying spaghetti monster and revel in the saucy, noodly bliss he doth foster. Amen. What a nice little poem. What 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 cadence was that from? Is that just that is iambic pentameter? Iambic pentameter. Really, really really cool. Very, very cool. Very classic. So so Shakespeare were alive. That's the kind of thing he would have written about the doodly one. Yeah, you know, the funny thing about iambic pentameter is that the way how we speak English in modern times now isn't the way how they spoke it back then. They had a completely different accent, different stresses on different syllables. And so what I saw, exactly, what I saw on YouTube was uh, a play, I think it was a speech from Othello, as, as heard by the people back then, by a person who was just very good at old English. And he was talking, and I literally could not understand a single thing that he was saying. And I'm like, is this, what What language is this? I've never heard this before. English? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You sent me back in the past. No one's going to understand me. I'm not going to understand anybody else. And they're going to be like, who's this talking black guy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, come on, guys. Like, trust me, this works out. It's like, whoa, what kind of ill manner of speech doth represent him? All right. Anyway. <laughs> Larry, we'd love to check in with you. How you been? I've been fine. As Christopher Hitchens, I mean, Christopher Robbins would have said, it was a very blustery day yesterday. Yes, it was. The wind really kicked up. Was it in your area too there in Nashville? Yeah, so we went to run a 5K yesterday. And let me tell you, the funniest thing happened. So uh, it was two sections. First half, you're running through neighborhoods. The last Mm -hmm. section, all downhill, straight to the finish line. And it was broken up to like the first two miles. You are going 5K is 3.1 miles for Canadians. Anyone watch it? (laughs) The first two miles. That's about eight eight kilometers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rough, the rough first four kilometers is like uh, through neighborhoods. You had a lot of wind protecting you. And then on the way back to the finish line, we got hit by the hardest wind possible on our backs. I was literally downhill. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Downhill with the wind at our backs. I had like this weird like jumpsuit sort of like running thing. And I was literally just hopping and letting the wind push me down. I made a personal best. It was crazy. Like I, I was playing mm-hmm. semi-charmed life 
in my headsets and I just hit the outside of the neighborhood and it got smacked in the face by this wind turn turn with my back to it and I'm just realizing like not only am I tired but I'm getting like the best sale possible I'm passing people I didn't even who like passed me up like four minutes before and I'm like this is great this is great this is great the the bridge hit as I was in full sprint and I like made my best time it was my first sub 30 minute 5k i've ever done so happy about that and yeah a lot of win couldn't play disc golf afterwards couldn't play pickleball afterwards but um i did go rock climbing as well afterwards that was indoor that was on a bouldering place and i did my first v3s uh, anyone interested there's a v system i think it goes up to like 12 and there's still people trying to make them higher so like v1 two or it's like beginner and they even have v0 which is just like training but i did my first three v3s which is like my first outside of the beginner school of climbing and it was fun it was fun i had a lot of people help me out like i fell off a couple of times and then people were like hey just put your foot here and try to push into it a little bit more and move your hips this way and it totally worked and now my forearms are completely dead but i had an eventful week on that part one last thing before we get to dread i got i was filmed as part of a thing for my job it was a four-hour shoot uh, so we've done commercials at my job before, but sometimes that's just a film crew coming in and be like, let's take a picture of you. Great. Thank you. And you never see him again. And next thing you know, there's a commercial and it has your face in it. And you're like, oh, that's cool. And they might use it for websites and stuff. This one was Tyrone. We want you specifically to be the spokesperson of a shoot that we're doing for this site. It's going to be a four day shoot and you're going to need to wow. go on location and we're going to film you doing this and what is, and we'll do a pre-interview to figure out what you like. And then we'll like a reality TV show, take you out to those places and film you doing those stuff. And we were volunteer. I was doing volunteer work at a high school. We we coordinate with the assistant principal to get some students in. And like I'm in the classroom and we're walking down hallways and there's like film crews in your face trying to get close up, close ups and there's sign off forms. And I was exhausted. And let me tell you something. I was so tired by the end of the week that I did not uh, have a lot of wherewithal. But I did come back to work on Friday and do some tours as well. As well. For, for students who are coming in that we couldn't schedule to film during the shoot. So I, I moved that out to Friday. But by the weekend hit, by the time the weekend hit, I was exhausted because then I had a 5K, then I had to go rock climbing. And now this is my time with you guys. I'm finally relaxed yeah. talking with some buddies about uh, <laughs> the nature of pasta and atheism. My, there's my cat in the background. <laughs> mm-hmm. So Dred, that was my week. How was your week, my friend? I know you're still doing some crazy stuff. With me? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm still up north here. Uh, in fact, it snowed yesterday, and it's yeah, it's a blustery day up here as well. Uh, okay, good. Just kicking around, and um, I tried starting my well. I went out and started my car just to so I could go down to Tim Hortons and get a coffee. And uh, I need half an hour for that car to warm up. So I said, well, I guess I'll just make coffee at home here and uh, make sure I'm on time. But uh, yeah, no, things are kind of slow, but because this is going to be uh, related to our topic. I started a new book. I finished I finished Stephen Pinker's, Pinker's latest book, Rationality, which is an excellent read if anyone uh, likes Stephen Pinker and optimism in society. That's a book uh, to pick up. Talks about uh, lots of, uh, you know, cognitive biases and uh, logical fallacies and I love that. Print, that kind of stuff and, and sketches a plan on how to get out of it. So uh, it's a it's a good read. So anyway, I just I just picked up uh, Marcus Aurelius's Meditations. Of course, that was written long, 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 long ago while he was emperor of the Roman Empire, and um, it relates to Stoicism and his reflections on on that way of life. And I think that will segue into what we're going to talk about today on both accounts. So. Okay, very cool. Yeah. Uh, oh, there was one thing I forgot to mention. So we didn't do a show the week before. And that was because um, I was busy, uh, not just with disc golf, but because I had started a religion. Yeah, it happens. Sometimes I sometimes I just <laughs> go about and do that. It's fine. Uh, so I knew I was going to be out for about two weeks. One, because I wanted to go uh, have a play date with some friends. The other one, because I'd be doing the shoot. And um, as a result, I said, hey, if I'm gone for two weeks, let me come back to the show with like a two week project. And so I said, what I do for my two week project is come up with a set of dogma, uh, dogmatic rule sets that are somewhat arbitrary that I can derive some sort of health benefits from or some meaning from and use that to to see how well I can follow them and how it feels when I 
in, in incidentally break them or the guilt that comes with like maintaining this or the the esteem that comes with uh completing the dogmatic dogmatic challenge we'll just call it like a dogmatic challenge the two rules that i had were basically this um whatever's in my fridge I can eat in my fridge. Whatever's in my cupboards, I can eat in my cupboards. But as far as restocking over the next two weeks, it can only be whole fruits, vegetables, and proteins. Not, nothing processed. That was like rule number one. So it's just raw foods I can purchase and put back in the fridge. And if there were like donuts at work, I can't eat the donuts at work. I'm only eating food that I'm preparing at home. So it's mostly like, hey, if you want fries, you're going to have to cook fries, but you have to like buy potatoes. Like you can't just go out to like a Wendy's or a McDonald's and get some French fries. You are making sure that you are cooking the food that you eat for the next two weeks, whether you like it or not. And it's all the food that's already in your fridge is the is grandfathered in. And I ran out of that food very quickly, man. I was eating Tums <laughs> <laughs> just for snacks. I ran out of the food so fast. I was like, oh, this is a bad idea. Like I, I, there was just food that I'm just like, I'm opening up the covers. I'm like, is there any snacks in here? There's no snacks in here. I was like, oh, okay. I guess I'll go get some bananas or something like that. Uh, the, that, the second rule I said was I spend too much time on the internet and the internet sort of dictates how I feel that because I wake up in the morning, I check notifications and based on whatever crazy happenings happened in the world that are out of my control, it sort of dictates how I feel for the rest of the day and how much energy and attitude, my attitude for the rest of the day and how I perceive things. And I said, that's not healthy. What I'm going to do is I am not on the internet unless if it's from 7.30 to 8.30. And only within that hour am I allowing myself free pleasure time to have look up stuff, YouTube, shorts, whatever. But if it's for work, I can be on the internet. But spirit of the rule is 7.30, 8.30 is that one hour block and only that at one hour block. I can't shift it. I can't bargain with myself, but I only have this strict regimen of time to go on the internet. And so what that's done for me is um, throughout the day, I'll think about stuff that I wanted to do or goof off on or, or get sidetracked with or procrastinate with as I'm doing reports. And I say, I can't do that. And I'll maybe make a note saying, hey, I want to check out uh, some random episode and I'll write it down on a notebook paper. Or I want to ask myself a weird question like, hey, where exactly do clothes go when you donate them to Goodwill? Like I'll, I'll, I'll write that down as a question. I'll have this nice little spreadsheet. And then I'm, I'm still doing my work. I'm staying focused. I come home and there's nothing for me to do. So I'll go out and go exercise or I'll go out and play with friends, but I'm not sitting in front of my computer. And then I'll come home and I still have, it's not 7.30 yet. So I'll play with my cat for a little bit. And then finally, once it's like 7.28, 28, and my cat's like playing fetch with me, I stop everything and I run to my computer. I'm like, okay, I only got an hour. And I'm trying to bust out all the questions I had on the internet, all the YouTube stuff I wanted to see. And I end up finishing within like 15 minutes. And now I have like this 45 block of internet time that I, I don't need anymore because I've just been so productive answering all the questions I already had. Go on ahead, Larry. What's up? Well, have you created a God to go with this new religion? I've created no God. This is a godless religion. This is a godless religion. So What? <laughs> I know. They do exist. But the whole idea was one hour of internet a day eating preparing all the food for my own home using raw ingredients aside from the stuff that was already in my fridge yeah. so, I didn't have to throw anything okay. away. so if you if you uh, go along with the tenets of this religion you're being good and but what forces you to be good if you have no pun punishment truth <clears throat> truth you know what i found i don't need a stick to eat a good carrot <laughs> <laughs> carrots are healthy okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Carrots are healthy. Sometimes I could be motivated by my own self-interest than I could be by uh, avoidance of self-harm, right? And I mm -hmm. find that at least in that non-wasteful dogmatic solution that I prepared for myself, um, I ended up with a lot more focus throughout the rest of the, the day. Um, to the point where it was at the beginning sort of mentally fatiguing to constantly be working on a project and realize I can't procrastinate or distract myself with like taking my phone with me to a, a 20 minute long bathroom break or something. Um, I also felt like the food that I was eating was so much healthier. I lost, I'm at my, some of my lowest weights right now. I'm like at 241, normally I'm at 245. So like I lost four pounds in two weeks. That's pretty good. Um, and I just felt really good. There was so much more time in my day. I was spending way more time outside. I was just telling you about all that stuff that I was yeah. doing. It sounds week. like you created so an exercise and food uh, regimen. Yeah, basically. basically. Yeah, and just one <laughs> founded yeah, on the not God. wasting. Where's the God in this? And yeah. that's the main And thing. the spirituality. And I didn't have to. I, I, I traded myself into this mindset. But the idea is um, 
I had all these beneficial things happening to me by a codified list of arbitrary rules that I prepared for myself and I followed. And I didn't need a God belief in order to do it. And or so when I look at exactly or spirituality, when I look at God beliefs or spirituality, what do I see is like the incoming set of steps? Yes, there is a God belief, but here's how we can make your life better. These are the things that you should do. These are the things that you shouldn't do. And when people regimentally follow those, um, I can definitely see the <clears> benefit. <throat> Of like, say, hey, I'm not going to steal because my book says don't steal. I'm not going to eat these salty foods because it might raise my blood pressure and blah, blah, blah. I get those. I get those. And I'm going to be, I'm going to honor my family. I'm going to honor my mother. And I'm going to do this. I'm not going to litter on the ground. And I won't wear cloths of two fabrics. And whatever set of arbitrary rules they need to follow in order to be happy. I can get that. I can get that. I get why religion works now for a lot of people. But my fundamental claim still is. You can get all of those regimented structures for your life to get that self-control, to get the improvement in your your outbeing, your 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 wellness, without the God belief, without the spirituality. You can get all the benefits or the punishment, the or the punishment, or the guilt. Thank you, Dread. What do you think? Well, I was going to say that's not necessarily the case because uh, people don't necessarily follow religions for the rules. They may think they do, but uh, I think oftentimes it's an excuse to do what you want. Uh, and then at the end of the week, yeah. say it was all justified and, uh, you know, the things I did wrong are already forgiven. So don't worry about that. It's reset time. Yeah, yeah. You do reset time. It's not about following the rules from Monday to Saturday. Uh, it's about doing whatever the yeah, hell you well, want. A lot of having a reason to, to say, ah, let's press the reset button on Sunday. Larry, what do you think? I, I want to think, dig into that more. I though. would think right. that there are people that follow their religion simply because they nitpick the book they have. It, the uh, the book is a Rorschach test. It has so much stuff in it. <laughs> you can pick what you want and say, That's God right. wants you to do this and mm -hmm. not point to the 16 other things in the book that it yeah. says that you're not following. Yeah. Um, it's just, well, you know, and that's a testament to why, why there are so many religions, right? right. Because right. people are paying attention to the <clears> priests. <throat> Who are interpreting the religion if you like your priest well you stick yeah. with your priest yeah but right. if everyone read the book it yeah. would be a different story wouldn't it right now look at um without getting too much into politics look at bobert the, uh, the congressman uh what's her first name can't remember anyway sh she's all religious and she she makes a big show of it she literally preaches religion but as soon as her son gets her his girlfriend pregnant well, that's okay. You know, I love my son. Everything's fine. But, you know, before that, I'm sure she would have said, you know, that's not done. We can't have that. You know, don't do that because God someone else's we'll son. That. Right. It all, all changes as soon as someone you love is involved. Now, yeah. here's my thing. Are there hypocrites in religion? Absolutely. And are they, you know, put on pedestals? Absolutely. And are there like a multitude of them that we can point out for the rest of the show? Absolutely. But I do think that there are people who find benefit in the outlining that religion offers them in a world where they feel like they have no self-control. And I can think of something like akin to Alcoholics Anonymous, where what's the first thing they try to indoctrinate you with when you're there is the existence of a higher power, right. that is managing your mm -hmm. lifestyle, who is watching you as a way to inhibit you from when you have no one watching you, to go back to your your deleterious habits, which is deleterious, Dele deleterious, deleterious, yeah, deleterious, yeah. right, 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 right. So <clears throat> I'm, I feel, I feel it is essentially a good means of controlling people, and and whether that's a, for a good thing or a bad thing, yes, it, sometimes it's definitely used for bad. Sometimes even people use it for their own self interest. But I definitely think there's a sect of people that get a benefit from having a regimented set of rules to follow that it actually improves their lifestyle but they don't need the god bags to go with it what do you think dread well you know i think there's a difference here between what you expressed you know your religion and the you know the common idea of religion and one comes from the inside which is you establish these things for yourself mm. and it was for your own self-interest that you um that you perform them and it wasn't about hand waving or virtue signaling you did it on your own account for your own benefit um, without a need to proselytize to others about uh, how good it is and whatnot. 
Sure. Uh, whereas it's the other way around <laughs> for for most part uh, in religion, where you are hand signaling or virtue virtue signaling or hand waving right. within the community that you become ensconced with mm. uh, in your religious practice. So I think there's a, you know, and of course this is a, bit, a huge generalization, but uh, so it doesn't apply everywhere. But you know, I think there's, you know, you can really parse those two differences out. Yeah. And, uh, and it reminds me, and what you were talking about, again, it reminds me of Stoicism. Okay, okay. You can parse those two out. Larry, did you have any comments? Okay, so my idea is, yeah, there's definitely the, there's the extension of what I'm doing now, where I could be just as harmful as classic religions are today. And that would be, hey, listen, now that I've done this for two weeks, I need you to buy my book. You are currently is sick. It? There is that. You need, you need the Wellesian system. You need the Tyrone Wells book. You're, you're unhappy. Let me tell you how to solve this problem for only $19.99 plus taxes as seen on TV. Subscribe and like to my channel. Like, definitely, definitely I can take it too far. Maybe there's something, maybe there's a better in between here in that, yes, maybe even if you have a God belief, maybe even if you have spiritualism, Maybe if you just keep that to yourself and make your personal God necessarily personal, maybe then it won't matter as much. Maybe you could have the baggage of a God belief, but as long as you keep it within yourself and still interact with people on a non-spiritual basis and, and still respect the fact that people have differing opinions, but you still have your personal belief system that you just keep to yourself personally, maybe we could all learn from that and you can still maintain your rules as long as they don't harmfully affect other people out in society, right? Like, don't cause this needless harm. But as far as whatever you want to believe after that, if it's in your own personal mindset, we're totally fine with that. And mm -hmm. maybe we can get, maybe we can turn away from this franchising religion that actually affects government and other people who aren't even in that religion to more of just say, hey, here's my personal codified list of rules. I'm not sharing it with anybody. This is a necessarily personal thing that I have with myself and my spiritual being or not. But here are the rules that I'm following. And I actually find that they actually improve my behavior substantially and allow me to have more time with the things that I love to do. I, I, I could see, I can see a lot of religions that we currently have right now, hopefully evolving to a place like that. If anything, I see mainstream Christianity more or less trending towards that day by day where it used to be, Hey, you don't believe in our God. Well, welcome to the crusades. We're going to do our ninth one. It's going to be amazing. You're everybody's going to love it. Everybody loves the ninth crusade. <laughs> and now it's like, Oh, he's gay. Well, you know, God loves him too. We're fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's good. You know, uh, I'm not going to, hey, Oh, he had my boyfriend or my son had impregnated a girl out of wedlock. Ah, it's fine. I love my son. Yes, I am a governor and blah, 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 but that's fine. I'm just sweeping it under the table. I do find that, um, the more religions move away from their their strict dogmatic punitive measures, the better they are getting towards where I'm referring to, which is just, hey, just keep it personal and abide by the rules of society, not by your God. And right. rules of society <clears throat> say, if it's not harmful and it's not causing anyone any problems or hiccups, it's okay. I mean, and it's keep it personal. Fine. Have at it. But for the most part, let's work together. Dred, what do you think? Well, I think they're... I think the whole idea of believing in things that are not uh, justified true beliefs are problematic, mm -hmm. right? So while it may be good advice to uh, suggest that people who have God beliefs not proselytize, um, it still is problematic in that they hold those beliefs, right? Right. Because it's still, you, you would still act in a way where you would want the influence of your beliefs to play out um, in the politics, in in your school board, in the way you run your business, in the way you interact with people. And, you know, if the foundation of the way you do those things is based on an unjustified belief, um, it's problematic, regardless of whether or not you're out there telling everyone about it or not. I agree. Right. I, I agree. Yeah. In fact, I would say like right now we have a system where people are both actively acting on unjustified beliefs and having them. And what I'd like to see is a transition step from 
hey, this is both unjustified and I'm acting on it to uh, it's unjustified, but I'm not forcing you to follow them either. And I'm not doing it in a large class. Is it the yeah. most ideal step? No. But I also feel like, <clears throat> and here's my other thing. Um, this is an interesting question. I'm, and I wasn't expecting to go on this tangent with you, but the American system at least has this philosophy of freedom of religion. You can believe what you want to believe. Does that not also include unjustified beliefs in their own right too? And does not someone have a right to believe in something that may not be wholly justified, particularly by the measure of other people who lack the ability to justify or test that belief in the first place? And so yeah. if that's the case, I'm fine with you believing whatever you want because you have a right to, as well as a lack of uh, a right to not believe in that as well. But it's the actions that you have on other people that I can at least hopefully yeah. influence and dictate. And that's really the only thing I care about. Yes, it's problematic if it's not true, but that's a different problem. What do you think, Larry? Well, certainly they have the right to believe whatever they want to, but we also have the right as members of society to examine and, and criticize those beliefs if, they, if we believe that they are harmful to society as Absolutely. a whole. Absolutely. 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 Yes. And you just that's because a, you have freedom exactly to believe whatever what you want. Yeah. Yeah. That, that no belief should be uh, um, protected you know, uh, exempt from criticism. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. Freedom of belief does not mean you're exempt from criticism. If, absolutely true. Absolutely right. true. Yeah. Absolutely and, and, true. And people don't have a right not to be offended. People don't right. have a right to not be offended. Truth. Well, uh, in, in the, I mean, that is the that's the basis of the freedom of religion, right? Because they being mutually exclusive, exclusive for the most part, one person's belief may be found offend another to someone with another belief. Yeah. So right. no one has a right not to be offended. It's like uh, the Charlie Hebdo thing. Yeah, where you, have... you know um, people draw some cartoons and and someone gets offended and guess what? Somebody dies, right? Right, 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 right. It's like we have right. a, we have a right from needless harm. That's really, I mean, that's truly it. It's like a, we have a right to health and happiness. I believe bodily in life. autonomy and bod uh, we should have bodily. <clears throat> But man, is that that's a bigger conversation. Yeah. Um, the main thing is, yeah, you're just because your feelings get hurt doesn't mean that that's a problem or because you think your beliefs are above criticism doesn't mean that they actually are. And we'll get into this more after we come back to the after the break. Larry, why don't you want to take us out? Sure. Um, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take a moment just to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in a 21st year now and have over 1,000 members. We meet weekly in person every Tuesday in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. Come on down and join us. You don't have to be an atheist to be there or be with us. Look for us inside at the high top table or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck or both. We also have a Tuesday evening Zoom ASK meeting. If you'd like to join us via Zoom, email us for details at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com. You can find us online on Facebook or meetup.com or at our website, knoxvilleatheist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. That's right. Wombat, well, where do you want to pick up? We got a comment for, I'd like to go over from Dada's Trading Room on uh, an episode from two weeks ago called Charity. <laughs> Dottis Trading Room had a comment on us because we had brought up Jesus during the show. And he says, Dottis Trading Room says, when a preacher calls out, Jesus died for our sins, you should ask, did he die? Is that really what you believe? Because you really need to make up your mind. He either died or he didn't die. If he resurrected, that means he didn't die. He could not have both died and not died. Mm -hmm. Dead is dead. He, and if, he's, if Jesus lives, he's not dead. Well, you know, when you're resuscitated, is that not, that doesn't count as death? Is, is when you like are medically, like your heart stopped beating, but you still have brain activity, it's not, not technically dead. Brain activity means you're not dead. Okay. Okay. So you're resuscitated. And, and that's not it. Well, here's another problematic thing is if you're omnipotent, mm. 
how how can you actually die? How can you cease to right. exist? And according to Christianity, we're all uh, uh, eternal beings. All, none of us die. Yeah, Dredd, got a question for you. What do you mean by that? Because by omnipotent, you should be able to die because that's a thing that <clears> something <throat> can do. And if you can do everything, you should be able to do that too, right? Mm. Well, I, I think it's a bit of a contradiction, isn't it? To Talk be to me. An omnipotent yeah. being, and then to have, and then to cease to exist. Like that. Well, if if you couldn't cease to exist, that's a problem too, right? <laughs> I suppose <laughs> it's a logical. Yeah, it's a logical. Uh, yeah, I get it's, you. <laughs> it's problematic. It's problematic. The only way a logical you do that is that, right? Yeah, you make a loophole where it's basically I am my son, and I killed him, and now I know what that's like. It's the classic Naruto Kagebunshin no Jitsu. Uh, let's see. Um, thank you guys so much for all the comments. Want to go into the idea of stoicism and pain, Dread? You had mentioned that the idea of building your own religion and your own set of rules is very similar to the concept of stoicism and pain, for example. What do you mean by that? Yeah. Well, you know, like I said, I started reading um, Marcus Aurelius's Meditations, and here's a case where a guy, um, you know, he was an emperor of Rome, hmm. uh, who took on a, a way of life. Um, which is almost religious in nature, mm. uh, you know, the tenets of stoicism um, are, are, can be, you know, characterized as, as almost religious restrictions, right? But he didn't do it for any hand-waving or virtue signaling purposes. Meditations, of course, he wrote those for himself. He never had any intention of having them published. They were just reflections on the way he ought to live within the uh, limits of the Stoic philosophy. Um, and, you know, one of these things is um, the idea that you shouldn't um, focus on any one thing over another. You know, for instance, uh, you know, gluttony over starving yourself or uh, pleasure over pain. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That all things on the balance are required for the good life okay and uh and you know you see nowadays that anybody i mean it's just a uh, you know uh, everyone wants to avoid pain as much as possible you know and that and it's often over any other consideration um and it, i think that's a it's a focus that doesn't benefit humans generally speaking larry no it's i find right. so i mean i agree that uh, you know the idea of living within practice and 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 to an extent careful moderation makes someone more mindful of their actions and like the idea of constantly not constantly but making sure you don't fall into any particular excess requires a lot of mental capacity and particularly with how you are living your life. So stoicism, unlike other philosophies, isn't a, I only need to check myself at the very start and then maybe at the very end. It's a controlled process where you're constantly reviewing your, your methodologies the entire time. I find that thoughtfulness to be very useful. And when I was going over my uh, practice of non-wasteful dogmatic rule sets that I made for myself, Every single time I wanted to just goof off on the internet or habitually open up an internet browser, I was reminded of my rules, closed them, and then had to find a better solution to resolve this tendency I had to like open up a chat window or pull out my phone for some reason. Or if I wanted to eat something that's junk food related, like some chips or whatever, I had to like either come up with a better idea of what I could consume or just work or distract myself with something more beneficial and and go outside and throw some discs or play with my cat or find something more meaningful to do with my free time than go out and get some junk food. There are There is a practice associated with distracting yourself from, I would say, like your personal demons and temptations. And I find like stoicism falls really cleanly into that. I find the idea of thinking about what you're doing rather than just doing it to be a very mm -hmm. good practice for people. And that mm -hmm. mindfulness isn't necessarily something that you need a God to do. But I do find that when you're religious, later I see it. When you are religious, you are constantly thinking, is what I'm doing a sin or is what I'm doing a blessing that God wants me to do? 
And if we were to just take away that God aspect and just come up with more traditional rules that are more fundamental about why sins are sins and why blessing is blessings and just take the baggage, the spiritual baggage off of it, we might find like a, the same practice of consequential actions without necessarily having to have the 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 religion or the spiritualism be a part of it. It's like, hey, I like helping people not because it makes God happy, happy, but because I like being in a society where it's where people help each other, and I'm going to donate clothes to charity because if I was in that situation, I would love to have clothes available to me, and it reduces waste on my end. Everyone's benefiting, and it makes me feel good too. And that's at the end of the day beneficial to me, being in a society where people are helping each other out. Like, there's so many good ways to set that up. Larry, what do you think? No, I, I think it's 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 good to be that way, and especially since uh, when you when you do something wrong, you don't have this like mental judge of right and wrong telling you that you will be punished for it. That's mind control. It's 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 uh, sin per se. You know, if you do something against the will of God, but it's just you setting up some arbitrary rules, right, uh, to live by, which right. is fine. Which if if the occasion happens then you can uh, make an exception for for a particular rule and if, if when you judge that the case uh needs to be done um be changed you can change them um i, I did want to ask uh, dread pirate about the uh, book he mentioned earlier uh, on rationalism uh yeah. would you say that 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 covers stoicism in that book is that right there's yeah there's definitely uh yeah it was funny how how well those two the one book uh, rationality leads right into marcus aurelius and i it was completely unintentional that yeah. those two books should one and should that was stephen it. pinker stephen pinker yeah rationalism yeah, he's a, a very yeah he's a harvard uh, psychologist uh okay. pr and professor a very very uh he's one of the 100 um most uh influential think thinkers of our century uh, so rated by yeah somebody. i just ordered it <laughs> well oh, perfect, while perfect. we were on yeah. is, is am i accurate or let me know if this is too simple but is stoicism like one of the hallmarks of it mm -hmm. or one of the tenets is like you shouldn't let emotions cloud your judgment that you should it, is that absolutely. accurate okay uh, it's there's to a degree it's uh you know it's uh spock embodies it uh maybe sure. to a fault to mm. a fault of course mm. Mm. because Spock is an extreme character but um yeah for sure and and this is what I was getting to with this idea of pain um as a necessary um part of our existence and that to you know to do everything one can to avoid pain is an excess in itself right because right. um you deprive yourself of the experience of the world Right. Um, I mean, it's like wrapping yourself in bubble wrap and mm. saying the the universe can't hurt me now. I'm right. impervious to it. Some uh, you know imprecations or whatever. Um, but uh, you, you know, I I think it's a it's a faulty um, a faulty mode of being. You know, it's a it, it's an excess essentially. Right. Avoidance of being can itself be an excess. And it's it's a double-edged sword. I was thinking of a memoir that Jackie Chan wrote where he said his net worth is $350 million after a lifetime of working, a lifetime of working from like five in the morning to 11 o'clock at night, training, training, and only breaking for lunch and, and, and dinner, basically. And he was raised as refugees. His parents had so little. Uh, he, he learned to appreciate scarcity. So all the money he has now, he deeply values. But the thing is, one of his biggest regrets is that he raised his son, his only son, J.C. Chan, in the lap of luxury, and his son has ba essentially no discipline. And so right. his son has gone to jail, um, has dropped out of college, and does not want to be a movie star, doesn't want to be an actor, doesn't want to be an engineer, doctor, or anything like that, is just essentially mooching off his his wife. And he's the son's hoping to get the, the windfall from Jackie when he falls. But Jackie says, you know what, I'm just going to donate my money to charity because I don't want to give it to my own son. And this is and this is causing a lot of problems in his life. And he's like, I should have found some way to have my son appreciate life like how I did with scarcity. And I find if like that Trump's father had had the same idea. huh? Right, right, right. But you were t exactly you're talking about pain, pain, the yeah. pain in Jackie Chan's life and the and the work, the hard work he had to go through made him appreciate the things that he has 
in a way that someone who had that to begin with since birth would never have the ability to appreciate. Yeah. They would have to learn the, to appreciate scarcity and hard work. It, it, and, helps, and, shapes, it helps to shape character, right? Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. And so like the same amount of money to the son might be a very small amount or just like his baseline level. Whereas for Jackie, this is like, this is an inordinate amount that we should be happy. And I want to use to avoid pain for my family, but maybe I should have taught what pain was in a more productive or constructive way so that he could appreciate it more. You know, we were talking about, Dredd, I got a question for you. We are talking about AI a couple of weeks ago and we we're saying like yeah. one of the things they will never be able to do is think like a human being, which is true. Uh, uh, we have emotions clouding our judgment all the time. But it sounds like if the tenet for stoicism is to think without the impact of emotions, isn't that essentially an easier target for AI to, to mimic? Because... You won't have mm. to teach an AI emotions and it would be able to give you the most logical balanced answer without clouding of things like ego or rage or happiness right, or right. pain or pleasure. What do you think? Well, it, yeah, that's a, a great stoic question. AI. Yeah. <laughs> stoic AI. Well, you know, stoicism is not acting in the absence of passions. It's acting where reason influences emotions right so emotions and passions are not to run amok mm. but are to be tempered by reason and the faculties of reason so it's you know like i said spock was an extreme character right sure. so if if you boiled you know stoicism down to its very essence then turn it into a paste yeah maybe that's what uh, you would have with spock but um I but think Spock was still human, true. or Spock was still had humanity. Spock still had humanity, and and that's and that's yeah, and that's and the what struggle made, made this character interesting. That's what made him a complicated character. Yeah, for sure. Right. right. But uh, yeah. you know, I think uh, you know the way that uh, um, you know Stoics e e express that philosophy mm. was not just one or the other. It wasn't just a uh, reason over emotion in all cases. It was a, a recognition that the reason needs to temper emotion um okay. for the most part it's it's like uh you know daniel kahneman uh and amos tversky in their thinking fast and slow is that there are the the two modes of thinking type type one thinking type two the type one is the quick um you know what's going on in the bushes there uh should i run away and then there's the type two kind of thinking which is re a reflective sort of uh pensive um uh kind of thinking that you take more time to do in order mm. to uh, judge whether or not your type one thinking was justified i like it i like it i'm going to ruminate on that for a little bit larry you had a comment <laughs> yeah um <laughs> when we're on talking that, about, about ais and emotions um it's, it seems to me that uh, we really haven't come down to how much emotions are based on chemicals, enzymes, yes. and, organs and stuff yeah. like that. And if they are, and AIs don't have those, how could they possibly have yeah. emotions? Uh, I mean, AIs would have to be the most stoic and um, uh, uh, intelligences on the planet mm -hmm. um, for the, for that reason. So, yeah, I but mean, you would have to teach them how to mimic emotions before they would have emotions to interfere with their logic. And and that's why I don't think they could ever be considered stoic because they never had the benefit of of having emotion, right? Well, no, no like, emotions you, you can you be mean, programmed into them. Well, you, you I, think about this. I'm kind of on, that, brains, on that page. Our brains are not limited to this squishy thing in the skull. They go right to our fingertips. And they go right to our toes because our bodies are part of our brain. Sure. Oh, yeah. Sure, right? yeah. And, and computers don't have the benefit of that. You can't, it's, I mean, you could program in a simulacrum of emotion, but it's not true emotion because there's no body or experiential unit that is connected to that uh, computer to allow it to have the sort of things that we experience as pleasure, well, pain. Why can't we just create that? All the rest no, of I mean, you're talking about experimental. Uh, I mean, computers, I mean, AI is connected to computers. Computers are connected to uh, temperature sensors, cameras, uh, microphones, which would simulate all of the experiential inputs that we have. 
even more detectors than that. Seismometers, yeah, that's, IR that's detectors, what I mean. and for you know. Uh, it's like this we, this yeah, has more sensors than my body does. In right. fact, I need to rely on this AI to tell me what's right. going on in the world than I do. When we ever have ships that can travel faster in space, we're not going to have like a pilot controlling that and be like, yeah, I see Jupiter coming up. It's coming up. Let me just make a ride around these ass. It's going to be a computer that like sees all that ahead of time, and makes the best yes. judgments for like the interests of the people that are flying the ship. We can ha we have modules on on Earth right now that like help us decide things that we just lack the ability to detect with our own eyes and our own ears. I couldn't imagine that we, I can imagine that we can already build something more complex with a more complex body. And all we just need is the awareness on top of it. I feel like we're lacking that awareness, but maybe we can get there one day. Uh, I, I think this feeds back into like sort of my, my only, my only critique with stoicism is that it tends to be um, detached from things that are out of their control or uh is 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 that fair like things are out of your control stoicism would argue that it's not something that you should be relevantly attached to it's it's out of your control is is that yeah, fair don't, is that don't right? concern yourselves with the things that you cannot do anything about correct it just it, in in fact they call those indifference fantastic like, indifference, like as an in indifferent plural there's Let little... me know if I'm still on track or if I'm off on track, because I don't want to offer an, a, a, an insincere or in, an authentic or inaccurate argument. But I would say yeah. that there's definitely things that I um, um, I don't have control over that I can hope to be the case and work now with a high degree of passion to instill in future generations to make an actual thing. And that could go from... Uh, protecting your neighborhood from being overly gentrified to coming up with new technology that I can't even fathom exist today or developing social changes that benefit people or reversing laws that uh, I feel are unjust. But as one person, I feel like I don't have the wherewithal or the power or the authority to make that change, but I can cooperate with a lot of bunch of people and and make a a, a meaningful protest to hopefully change the odds maybe not in that one protest but to start a ball moving that gains traction and hopefully causes more people to be more sympathetic to the the change that i'd like to inspire um mm -hmm. i feel like a lot of those things don't fall in the scope of stoicism because it's not within the scope of things that i can change or the suffering that you're going through right now is relevant because suffering is relevant as far as stoicism goes and you should just be more detached about the reality that you're in um my my thing is i like to be engaged and even in even in under in underdog fights. <laughs> I'm not sure if, uh, if there's a place for that in stoicism. Dread, do you think that's fair, or am I mischaracterizing? Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's so extreme as that. I mean, again, it's I think it's far more nuanced. Um, okay, it's much it's much more subtle, and you know, uh, you know, it's, stoicism developed over a long period of time. Uh, and wasn't limited to one or two authors in the space of fifty or sixty years. It right. it was uh, it was pretty prevalent in, and fine tuned uh, over time. In that period of, of Roman history, um, you know Seneca, uh, Marcus Aurelius, uh, and there were other you know well known um, uh, philosophers and and people of note in Roman uh, culture that uh, espoused Stoicism. Um, and actually, some of the the more important works are are lost. Uh, some of the bigger names that have been referred to by these other people uh, are lost to antiquity. Let me throw out um, an example. So, it, so I, it's I don't it, doubt like that I it's say, it's much more nuanced than just. I don't uh, doubt that it's nuanced and, and long lived. But for example, as a Pasiferian, you're up against a huge mountain of 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 a battle against institutionalized Christianity, and a person with more traditional views or or uh, even as as simple views non nuances views as mine would say you are spending too much time with your pirate hat and once every <laughs> 7 days doing a noodly uh prayer to a god that you know isn't justified so why don't you just you know how dare you at how yourself. dare you why hey i'm as a stoic as a stoic none of these gods can be justified <laughs> so why are you wasting your time it's out of your control what are you doing? What are you wasting your time? Like, shouldn't you just be? But, but that's just it. It's, it isn't out of my control, you know. Um, and I guess it's you know defining what what that tenet of stoicism actually means. Mm -hmm. And that's why I mean it's, it's much more nuanced than is it in my control or isn't it? And how would do you we agree? define that? How we so would you agree that? then that you could have two stoics in the same room and they would actually have different ideas <laughs> about the nature of it between the two of them? Yeah, there you go. 
So look at that. We made yeah. another religion. That's right. We've schismed it. <laughs> Which means yeah. going back to the top of the show, it's if you have your own personal impression of what this is, I'm totally fine with that, especially if it's pro and that's personal. What I really care about is how it's it's implied through your actions and how you're using to control how your behavior impacts other people. And if you can do it for good, like if we can have, sit down and have a great conversation about it, an enlightening conversation where we learn a lot of uh, new authors and, and modes of thinking, that can be so valuable. And if I can like spouse like, hey, what this is something I've done for the last two weeks and it worked out for me, I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just saying something to think about if you were interested in this and maybe we are spending too much time on the internet and maybe you could enjoy learning how to cook some different foods. I made French toast this morning, loved it. I hadn't made French toast in forever, but finally used like vanilla extract in the uh, whisks. Like I wasn't just milk and eggs. Mm -hmm. I put vanilla extract in. Man, does oh, yeah. that change the taste. Makes Amazing. Mm -hmm. So good. So good. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. things like that, just small little learning points that I could use to enrich my life can mean a lot of things. And like stoicism and like my rule set that I came up with two weeks, something a rule set that Dredd is pointing to that was around since the Roman Empire versus the thing that I came up with two weeks ago, both had dramatic or uh, noticeable improvements in our lives and 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 changed a lot of waste that we were generating with our time, but did not require a spiritual God to give it to us or a, a benevolent God to like hand down these rule sets for us. We made it ourselves. And that's the main thing that I'd like to take away. We are capable of coming up with the rule sets to, to engage with other people with and to control our own lives. We have that ability to do self-control. And it's not something that we can change overnight. Sometimes we got to work on it. Sometimes we make mistakes, but you don't have to worry about the sin aspect and the punitive measure and the stick that comes from religion if you mess up. You can make mistakes. You can learn from them and you can improve upon it. Just keep working on it. That's all I would say. Dred, what do you think? Um, I was going to point out that uh, Marcus Aurelius believed in a soul. But he didn't believe the soul was immaterial. Um, they didn't believe in afterlife and that sort of thing. So that puts a that that puts a blush on the whole belief system uh, when you think about uh, how different it is now, where mm. people think they have souls and that they're immaterial and immortal. So mm. um, the the way they viewed their existence back then, and and Marcus, of course, was greatly influenced by Greek philosophy, um, which is where Stoicism actually came from. Um, so I think that's an important point to note uh, as a difference between the way Stoicism may be practiced today uh, by religious people who believe in the immateriality of the soul or its immortality, as opposed to um, the way those beliefs were expressed uh, 2000 years ago. Nice. Okay. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, uh, Ancient did, point. Did, in your religion, your new religion, uh, I'm, I'm not really sure it, it's really a religion. Wow, do, dare do, you. Do you pass the plate? Do you have bake sales? Do you have potluck <laughs> dinners? <laughs> it's not a religion. Well, he's the emperor, so he can do anything he wants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, I listen, yeah. I'm 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 a fan of the idea of a religion for one. I'm all I'm not a fan of theism. And I think there's a distinction, right? Because theism is the line in the sand <laughs> where I get off the religion train. If someone says, Hey, I have a bunch of stuff that I do as just a practice that I to do it to improve my life, I'm fine with that. That's a regimen. And 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 if it's a spiritual regimen, then I start getting like, hey, when can I get off this train? And once we cross into the theism pool, I'm like, all right, we're done. I can't I can't fall here with you because you're not justifying a lot of these extra uh, baggage that's coming with this trip. Right. However, the fund the fund the foundation of that theism, the foundation of that um, uh, 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 spiritualism, is in my head a question of whether or not someone is using a good rationale to reach conclusions or not. And I find that if you have a non-spiritual, non-God-based set of rules, you have essentially a set of empirical data and a hypothesis that you are constantly testing that I can look at and say, hey, I feel like I'm wasting too much time on the internet. So what have you done? I spent less time on the internet. Did that improve your work? Yes, absolutely. It's like, that works. I can follow that. I can follow any religion that is basically based on science or empirical data that is easy 
but it's the ones that bring up the God belief. It's the one that brings up the spiritualism. It's the one that brings up these big questions that there's no meaningful way to test it. That's when there's a problem in society, especially when it's used to dictate the lives of other people. And so that's what we need to control or that's what we need to be at least aware of. Yes, you have a right to believe what you want, but you don't have a right to force me to believe it too, right? So be careful how you package it and give me the opportunity to think critically before you indoctrinate me into your mindset. Uh, We got to wrap up. Dread Pirate, can you plug some books for us? Um, well, again, Marcus Aurelius Meditations is a great book. I've just started reading it. And uh, Stephen Pinker, anything by him. Uh, Ooh, anything by him. Now, Rationality, uh, Better Angels of Our Nature, uh, Blank Slate. Uh, Stephen Pinker is an awesome author. Uh, check him out. I think he's a Pulitzer Prize uh, nominee and finalist there a couple of times. So uh, check him out for sure. Uh, uh-huh. My stuff. My stuff you can find on um, Mind Pirate on my YouTube channel, Mind Pirate, M I N D P Y R A T. I live stream this when I'm on at um, 7 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time on Sunday mornings. So, nice. Uh, check it out. I got a weird recommendation. I would recommend that everybody watch Everything Everywhere All at Once. It's oh, a movie. Yeah, that was a great, great movie. A bunch of Oscars. Listen, I had that movie overhyped <clears> for me before I even saw it myself. And I thought, uh, I, I'm going to ruin the movie because my hype's too big. It surpassed my hype. It's one of those movies that you need to watch. In the same way how you don't need really, uh, God to have a spiritual belief system, you don't need a giant, overbloated movie budget to make a AAA movie. And these are two guys, essentially, as directors, working as producers, making the smart choices to efficiently make the effects of a movie that has a fantastic story stand out. And when you watch it, you don't realize how low the budget is. It's just a love of the craft of filming and you would really appreciate it from both a construction of film as well as a storytelling uh device and when you're done you'll call your mom it's a fantastic movie it's excellent yeah. larry yeah. what do you got yeah oh my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives atheist songs and many articles on the subject of atheism you can find my book atheism what's it all about on amazon and my youtube channel handle is at doubter five remember everybody is going to somebody else's hell the time to worry about it is when we when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real until then don't sweat it enjoy your life and we'll see you next wednesday night at seven o'clock on wzo radio say bye everybody bye Bye -bye. everybody